all of Anything Europe? Anything underneath Scandinavia? Okay, so England, Scotland, Ireland, the Isle of Man, Germany, parts of Lithuania, Poland, France, all of that at some point was Gaelic. The French language is very interesting. Just like... <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just say the flinch language? The French language is okay. very interesting, though, because, like, um... Okay, Gaelic, ancient Gaelic, Welsh, and ancient Gaelic sound close, because the Welsh, which is what the English in them eventually came from, kinda, uh, like, they like to say, well, we're not the same, because that's Wales and we're England. Yeah, but it's kinda, ah. Uh, because the way Wales, Wales was Wales, first, you yeah, fuck. Wales was first, and they went up there and they started <laughs> fucking the shit out of the Britons. And they made the the uh Saxons and Saxony, which became England. Um I think that's what it was. It was well it was Welsh, Br uh, Brighton, Saxon. And that's like the progression is Welsh fucked the Brit the Britons made the Saxons, and then the Saxons made the English, when Wessex took over all the ancient kingdoms and the first king, uh, the first ever king, which was, uh, not Alfred, uh, I think it was Arthur. I think it was, uh, Ethelstan. Ethelstan, I think, was was it Ethelstan? I think it was Ethelstan. And then, I think he was the first official king of all of England. Ethelstan in the house, yeah, he was the grandson of Alfred the Great. And he's the 30th great-granduncle of the current queen of England. Just how much hard drive space do you have in your brain? <laughs> That's if you I exercise it, a lot. Um, but like, yeah, back to fairies, though, like pixies. Pixies are part of the fairy family. Uh, but, to be clear, Spriggans and Skyrim, those big wood people, those are fairies. You see how big and strong they are. All fairies like are they considered hurt. to be... Well, Spriggans <laughs> aren't natural. That, that game gets them wrong. They're not naturally aggressive. They don't just, you know, you're walking through the woods, mind your business. They won't be like, bitch, <laughs> and slap you. They'll just mind your business. Spriggans get aggressive if you wander into their den where they're trying to protect their seedlings and hearts of the forest. They don't, they're not going to be in every forest, though. They pop up in forests that are in jeopardy and they nurture them back to hell. Spriggans work underneath a dryad, usually. And she does all that bullshittery. Or technically, it could be either like anime and comics and books and movies and games paint dryads as women. They don't technically have a gender because they're magical. They the reason they choose a woman is because it's more comforting to people. So when a person is scared and wandering in the woods and they get lost, a woman is more easy. For, would you be more scared of a of a woman barely clad in clothes, <laughs> fucking you know nursing your wound back to hell, trying to tell you to calm down? Or some big, brolic, motherfucking seven-foot-tall muscle... Well, actually, I know a lot of people who would be okay with waking up to that after a headwork. Half of them are chuckling right now. On the other hand... I can think of a lot of people who would like to see that. On the other hand... Well, that's modern... That's modern day, though. Back then, no fucking hunter wanted to step on a trap from some other hunter and wake up to some big, muscled fucking... Chocolate God, just it is okay. No, fear Rubbing not. Him down and shit. I said, fear not. <laughs> fear not, my child. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, that's why most dryads are painted as women. They can be either, which means there could technically be a patriarchy in the whole thing. It doesn't really matter. All fairies, technically, in in Irish Gaelic, answer to the Dagda, who's like. Two ways he's described. Uh, there's uh, one. Basically, he's like super. He's like super Gandalf because he's depicted as a really old dude with a really big wooden stick and a long beard that goes down to like his fucking knees, covered in like moss and flowers and stuff. You know, he's actually 
fun fact, uh, the pic the depiction of like Father Time, where like he's all mossy and bullshit. Yeah, that comes from the Dagda's paintings. Because he was the first. He created. Um, and then there's the other version of him. It's what I like to call you fucked with the wrong old man mode, where he is shows you where the Twatha Danan, the Twatha as they're just colloquially known, the superhumans of Irish mythology who are like eight feet tall and could literally rip fucking trees out of the ground with their hands. The ones who created monstrosities like Dermud and Cthulhuin and Fergus and Deirdre, the, all those fancy motherfucking knights, were all descendants of them a little bit. Cthulhuin was the most pure. He was Lou's son. And, you know, Lou killed the Fomorian Malfor or whoever, who was like a 70 or 80 foot tall Cyclops with like skin as hard as stone. And he punched his fucking eye out and then pulled out his brain or some shit and bit it. Some weird shit like that. I feel uh, like yeah. warp spasming is dip very painful. Uh, it literally is complete inverse of the body. Organs on the outside and much bigger and angrier. Like, okay, not necessarily organs. That's like a newer thing. What it really was is all of his skin flipped inside out and he swelled because his skin wasn't containing his muscle. Skin so is he, an organ, so you're still technically yeah. right. Yeah, so his, uh, his skin flipped inside out, peeled back, eyes bulged, fucking body started to deform as his muscles grew. And that said that his warp spasms were because that's the power of a Tuatha trying to contain itself in a little human body. I mean, even if that wasn't a Tuatha, I feel like if your skin just inverted right in front of me, I'm just gonna be like, you know what? It's not worth it. You win. The things, the things that cool to him now... Uh, being dunked in iced water. Tits. Um, Grandma. having one of his, uh, his grandmother, having one of his friends hug him, and tits. Calmed him down immediately. Which is why when Alana pissed him off, someone lifted her shirt up and showed him, showed him her tits. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like the only, yeah, you, you don't, that, because it's, that's like canon myth is that his warp spasms are heavily tied to his anger. That's the big problem. It's like every waking moment Kakulin is was alive or is alive. He wants to destroy every fucking minor insignificant problem to him, because that's that's thousands of generations of Tuatha blood in him wanting to fight. Because they spent their entire existence up until the death of the Fomorians at the hands of Blue and others fighting from the moment they were created by the Dagda the moment that they ended up making all of us little peoples born of their seed they technically the dagda made people himself and then a lot of other you know things things are gonna fuck and that's led to like you know that's why um, superhumans in our modern day are believed to be descendants of the tuatha of random ones there were so many that they didn't all get named they were numerous though there were hundreds of thousands of them the fucking druids are weird, but yeah. But yeah, the Dagda, that's like his second depiction, is um basically like the biggest fucking person you'll ever see. It's just like a sculpted man of just like an Adonis of muscle, uh, who's said to be able to literally lift the ocean with one hand. I don't know how you go about doing that because it's water, but you know, fuck you, he's a god. Gods no. tend to do whatever they want. Well, it's just the fact that the ocean weighs like 11 quintillion tons or some shit. So, yeah. It's heavy. I gotta go pee. I'll be right back. And that should be all the files you need to open up. Phone is present. It still gets me. Fucking Echo Cat Girl Fairy Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. And I thought Japan was the weird. Nah, no. oh, they're just copying. But no, uh, Dark. 
dig it. Okay. Something I told Ivy and uh, Wayne earlier. Something just clicked in my head earlier. What's that? That sounds like an hey. issue you should be worried about. Usually oh, your head uh, doesn't click unless there's a bomb. Well, for one, this is probably going to be the last campaign shadows it, it will be. But it occurred to me that he had somehow shadowed himself into marrying one of, if not the strongest bloodline of the house in this campaign world. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. By being a complete doofus. No! I'm gonna throw that out there. No? No, not the strongest. But one of the strongest. Really? Randall's not the strongest? Randall himself is, but his daughter doesn't have nearly any of his power. Uh, I mean, now they have oh, I, I get what you I mean, like... <laughs> Technically, they're not even a bloodline because Randall's not alive. It's a bloodline if there's familiar lineage. It's a bloodline. Technically, she wasn't born. She was literally created. All well, then, what do you call all the old mythology bloodlines with that have that have had the uh, uh, created heirs? Well, those people were created, and then they fought. Therefore, it became familial. Like there's no. It's like there's no correlation between. The god and the pain. There we go. The god penis. Anyways. Okay, now I'll put it to you this way. If you construct a robot and it calls you family, is it actually a bloodline? If you adopt it, yes. It's an oil line. <laughs> <laughs> it's an electric line. <laughs> it's an electric line. <laughs> I can hear the gun and wait to copy it so Um, but... Like... I tell you right now, you get into dire straits, Randall's gonna let you die. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Randall has the mentality of, I can make more. Because Randall's strong, but death in incarnate lives in this world. You have them. And, and they literally, you can't exactly fight death, because if they fucking touch you, and it's you can't over. be brought back, even as an adventurer, you will not be brought back by the magic of the guild. They override it. They are a yeah, primordial force. He claims you. Yeah, you kind of so need a soul one. here to actually get revived. Uh, that's one of the caveats. The guild doesn't tell all the rookies, so they don't panic about, like, ah! Is um if it reaps your soul technically you stay dead. It's like Don't. Middle Earth here. Anything with a soul is immortal from oblivion. But physically immortal, not really. Maybe don't fight something called a soul eater if you wanna stay alive. Mm. There are only there's only a few enemies that can do a soul ring. Very rare. They're not in any of the dungeons that you're going to. They are in the dungeon that Kevin's going to. <clears throat> That'd be fine. I can imagine it's rare. I mean, who's going to teach you how to do that shit? The Black Steel Fortress. Yes. Black Steel Fortress. Oh, uh, Death Mages. One copyright space. Yeah. <gasps> What's death like in this universe? Is, are they just like really impatient or are they just like sit down and have a chat with you? You'd have to meet them. Oh, well. Can, I, can we not meet death? You can literally go to their kingdom. <laughs> You're in the wrong profession to not meet death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, we could go to their location and physically meet them and be fine as long as we don't like shake hands. They're very, very patient because they have the courtesy of being an eldritch being. So because of that, they have an appreciation for the long game. Like, that's why the lightless humans are there. They help them carry out their tasks. 
they seen the value in saving them, even if it took generations for their numbers to replenish and them to actually establish a functional civilization in the Lightless Kingdom, they still did eventually pay off. They're fine with that. They're a very patient person, naturally. They're a very... Not a very uh, aggressively vocal person in a conversation. In fact, they seldom actually speak themselves. It's almost in guaranteed to be one of their advisors who are also very not the people you want to fuck with because they are lightless humans who have ascended and become exalted in death. Oh, damn. A very dangerous thing because they are one of the only people that can walk around use the death touch themselves and can reap souls and empower themselves with the power of souls. Death paladins, death paladin, death paladin. <laughs> they can literally kill anything that isn't an exalted in death. Even then. Yeah, depending on who his favorites are. You also don't want death to look at you. It makes you feel very cold. They sap all the heat out of the room. Damn, I could use that right now. And you, you'll always in when you're ta even if you're, if you're talking to them, you're not gonna be close. You're gonna be several hundred feet away. You're still gonna feel this sense of impending dread. I just had a funny thought that definitely never happened of death being used as an air conditioner. Because <laughs> you said they suck all the heat out of a room, so all they have to do is stare at a room. No, them being in the room is pulls it out. Oh, okay, so they wouldn't have to stare at anything. They could just be like, hey, you mind if we set up some pipes? Just, just ends the cold. Probably not the good kind of cold, either. Yeah, like that dry-ass stale cold that people talk about. Like, nightmare <laughs> is fucking weird. Weird how? I'm in the uh, profession oh. of making that kind of cold. Well, I'm sorry. The lightless kingdoms have. It's a good thing. If you like humidity, you're fucking wrong. Yeah, I agree. If your house is above 75, I don't yeah, want you're to wrong. visit your terrarium. Like, okay, so we live under uh, technically a white star ourselves. Yes. Uh, but it looks yellow because the atmosphere and bullshit. Um, so we get yellow light which is on the red light spectrum, technically. That's why it doesn't hurt to look outside on, like, staring at a blue screen of some kind. Uh, it's a white filter of light there in the Lightless Kingdom because it is a pale sunlight. It is odd because you won't feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, but crops can grow, sort of. So they don't grow normally. They kind of grow as, like, these half-lives of themselves, these shells. So it's oh. delivering UV radiation, but not thermal. Maybe you want the sign, then, yeah. And night there is always a pale moonlight. It is almost entirely a pale moonlight. There's a, there's like sort of like a silverish glow to all the luminescence in the lightless kingdom. It's... <laughs> really weird to be there because it's like you stepped out of reality into a place of like empty black and white sounds kind of like the twilight zone where's my gun i am now home i could tell but uh no yeah, not the wanna... not the movie like from zelda like everything's kind of desaturated and pale Something I have to get used to there too is um you won't hear sounds that are very distant. Very quiet. Not a lot of adventurers like going to Lightless Kingdom because they just don't feel right there. Because it's uncanny valley in the form of a kingdom. I wonder how much red uh, is in a house <laughs> <clears throat> uncanny valley. I'm just being silly. 
Yeah, you could apply. Over time, you would become lightless, though. Huh. Interesting. What does becoming lightless mean? Uh, you'll start to lose all of the color, pretty much, and become very pale, like Yandra was. Um, you'll lose the ability to feel warmth in the same way. You'll get a hypersensitivity to death, but not in a bad way. You can feel death. You can sense it. It doesn't bother you. It's a good thing, technically. You're very in tune with natural forces around you. And you can feel the ebb and flow of waning life. So is becoming a lightless like a cumulative thing? Like having cancer? Or is it like, oh, if you leave for like three months out of the year, you're fine? Uh, it's one of those things that there's a point of no return with staying in the lightless kingdom. It's If you're there for a certain amount of time and leave for like a little longer than you were there, usually... The natural energy of the fucking planet will, it'll fix you, but it's living in death's influence that long changes you. Uh, fair yeah. enough. You, I mean, you could technically become immortal through that means, but it's not a life you'd want, because you can't spend too long outside the Lightless Kingdom, or you will feel Ill, very ill. You need to be near that. The only time that a lightless is able to spend time outside of the kingdom for decades at a time is if they're killing things because they need the death. They just do. They need that. They physically need it. Makes sense. Yeah, it's not very. That's also a big problem. Is there are lightless who go a little murder happy, and death sends out hunters who will track them down and bring them back, or the uh, kill them out right. much Killing them is not... No, that is not... That is a no. very pleasant thing. It's not killing them. They essentially... Uh, they render them inert. They... They die, but they don't die. Like, their body, it's just a husk. But, like, everything oh. that made them conscious is stripped away. He literally kills their individuality and their essence, their spirit. So a fate worse than death. Much worse. <clears throat> They're like trapped in a hell. Part of them locked in a prison of their own making, essentially, while they're able to watch their husk go about its day-to-day -day in the catacombs where they eventually get put to roam aimlessly. Uh. So does the size of the death matter? Could you just have like an ant farm and squish one once in a while? You have to kill something equal or greater than you. Okay. So, yeah. Like, it has... Okay, well, you could kill a lot of... You could kill an entire village and get the same effect of killing one person of equal strength. But, like, it's quantity. But it can't be, like, killing a bunch of deer, or killing a bunch of boars, or ants, or birds. Those are lesser entities in the eyes of death. It has to be an entity of equal importance in the world. If you're a human, and you go around killing a bunch of little goblins, that's not really going to satiate you. They're goblins. You naturally are technically superior. You're bigger, you're, you're stronger, higher you're up on the ladder. Yeah, you're... Wow, racism. In my TTRPG, it's, it's, it's more it's, likely it's, than it's you think. It's essentially... It's essentially <laughs> fucking... Uh, yes, it is essentially dead racism. <laughs> Death being racist, who knew? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the world was very black and white for him. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah. God damn. Anyways. He must have a very monochrome color scheme. Shut. I mean, even if things are in black and white, you can still get, like, super vibrant colors, like fucking neon pink and get some gradient. That's what the uh, Adams family You will see colors. You, you, you will see colors. Okay, so... Stretch. So, while I've been waiting for us to start, I did a hunt in the, uh... fucking Fire Realm here on... What the fuck it's called on? Godfall? And I found an easily abusable hunt. You have to defend these three crystals. You will fail if you try to do it by yourself. Um, but basically, the final 
the way it doesn't end, and it's all super high-level enemies. <clears throat> 45, 50. 47, the highest I've seen is 49. Awesome. And I've leveled yeah. up. I'm 49 myself right now, and I'm just going running around just like, fucking murder! Okay. Well, let's go ahead and start. I got my food also. Yay. You have been brought by Amandre. It's very interesting. You noticed they're a goblin. You also notice they're six feet tall. Confusion. It's a large. Uh, how do you spell? How do you say large and goblin in the same sentence? Or same word. A large lin. There you go. <clears throat> a gob large. Aren't they just called hobs? Or wait, no, that's a different thing. Hob. Okay, no. no hob goblins hob aren't even be appropriate. related. Well, he's. Like, they're part of the same overall species, but, like, he himself is technically a, um, he's technically a goblin. Don't call him a hob. That's a racial slur. That's an actual mythical creature. What are you talking about? Yep. Don't be racist, my bad. In our world. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know how bad you want to call them demi-humans. Uh, Naibai has never once called anyone a demi-human. <clears throat> internet got out. And the internet's back. And the Hello? internet's gone. The internet got stolen, and the internet ran off with a lightning button. My, uh, my self-driving <clears throat> truck drove off with my... Good riddance. And it took the dog. All right, Again, to good riddance. What's the deal with him the divorce? Anyway. Find out next time in Dragon Ball D. <laughs> yeah, uh, Disney Plus this dick. <laughs> Just you. Fuck some shit. Seriously, though. Hello, Torrance, my old friend. Okay. So Omanre has set you down at the table where they're all just having a conversation with Citron over there. Citron. I cannot get over her name. <laughs> what? What? What's wrong with it? <laughs> it's essentially the precursor to a lemon. Yep. <laughs> it's also one of the most over-engineered fucking bikes in all of Germany that will fuck a car up. <laughs> it will. I seen a fucking Chinese car, a video of a, a bike uh, of a bike getting run over by a Chinese car. Guess he was being an asshole. He's like, "Fuck that bike! It's in my way." It buried itself into his fucking engine block. <laughs> oh damn! The is real. Is real. It's made by a. No, it doesn't matter if it? it's made of steel or not. Okay, it's the fact that it's precision German engineering. We got stellinium, Chineseium, precision German engineering, Americanum. Where's it gonna <laughs> end? <laughs> Einsteinium. Now you're just making things up. Ooh, Einsteinium's real. And Californium as well. Yeah. They've only ever existed in micro minute quantities for millions of a second, but you know, they're still real. However, when I was in school, they just named them after the numbers. <laughs> we get it, you're old. <laughs> this is one. <laughs> this is two. I need to get Ivy and fucking Demonic into the same group so they can discuss how old both of them are. <laughs> I forget, how old did you say he was? He was born in 1975 or some shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he grew up in the 80s. 
I was like, man, nobody cares about the 70s. Like, hey, fuck you, dude. The 70s are the greatest generation because that's when I was born. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never uh, say Daniel Son. Don't. He will kill you. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> because when he was going he to fucking high school, kill you. when he was going to high school, fucking Karate Kid was just coming out. The amount of times he heard Daniel Son. Oh my god, it is like fucking listening to a Vietnam flashback. <laughs> okay. Yes, you've okay. got Roman Ray the Goblin. You got Dermon over there. You're not sure what he is. He's wearing a hood. Or it. Hey, Sklee, them. Then you've got Aurora. Happily sitting there eating what looks like a big bundle of rice and beans. But not like loose beans, like refried beans. You cut out right at the end. All I heard was rice and bean, as in a single bean. Just a big it's like fucking she's, it looks oversized like she's just bean in the middle beans. of their black rice bowl. It's a very really big a bean. Gargantuan bean and rice. That could actually be a dish. I like it. I can imagine that there are some plants that are like giant. Yes. Yeah. One of which Giant is the, one of which is known as the Goliath. I'm Lilliput. It's a fruit. The way I can describe it is it's kind of like this weird mix between a pomegranate and a mango. Sounds like the Florida uh, elderly love it. <laughs> it's really popular with most people. Very, they're big though. The reason they call it Goliath is because. You're like, if you get one of these things and they're fucking, they're ripe, not fully matured, but they're ripe enough to eat, you're looking at like six or seven pounds of fruit in your hand. Hey. Oh. So that's one you share with friends. <laughs> that, that is a well, that family is... meal for orphans. <laughs> Problem is they only grow in parts of Nemantia, or Laxia, because they need a specific climate that you can't get in Ilva Romana. Weirdly enough, Kevin's not a fan of fruit. Is there He's something that grows in uh, Ilvermar that doesn't grow anywhere else? Yes, actually. Mm. It's... They call it serpent's rice. It's this weird, interesting rice pod that grows kind of like naturally with the little pods aligned like scales. And they can have wildly different flavors based off of where they're grown, the soil, and what's introduced into the soil as they're growing. They oh, need fuck. the very rice does come in pods. Yep. Mm. All this yeah, refer to it as the husk or the hole. All this time I thought they grew like fucking wheat or something. Wheat do the same thing. Hmm. Because wheat's kind of its own grain. Are all grains or rice is a grain, sort of. Wait, okay, so, so is it like Basically, a cashew shell that you husk off, essentially. You have to. You don't have to. Like, if you get, you know, the wild oats or the wild rice you can buy. Yeah. I like the black and the white and all that. That's um hard, harder out exterior to it that gives it that color. That's the husk, or the hull, or the fuck ever they call it. Oh. Completely edible, and oftentimes it makes it taste even better because it's a different set of um. Yeah. The, I don't the know. fiber. I'm not exactly sure why the whole bleaching your food craze got super big, but whatever. Oh, that's simple. Back in medieval times, um, only rich people could afford enriched bleached foods that looked presentable for giant dinner parties. It went with the fucking everything being white or blue and shit. It's also that's the reason why France and England liked to wear... Um, lead dioxide as part of their uh, makeup. It turned their skin a very pale white, which they viewed as pretty isn't, and such. Isn't that kind I of... Yes. I mean, they also put Super drops of uh, nightshade belladonna in their eyes to dilate their pupils because they thought that was yep. pretty. Nightshade? Yes, the poisonous belladonna. one. The one everyone knows. 
Yep. But nightshades. What is it? Aren't nightshades also very closely related to like lavender as well? Or lavender is very closely related uh, to nightshade? So nightshade is its own family with a lot of stuff that's not going to kill you, like tomatoes, for instance. Uh, yeah, I was about to say tomatoes. Uh, oh, that's actually they're... kind of funny. I didn't know that. And then there's like yeah, stuff sure. that's closer to probably killing you, like blackberry nightshade, which doesn't look like a blackberry at all, and <gasps> will absolutely fuck you up if you get it uh, before it's ripe. But once it is ripe, just fine. It's delicious. Cat's tail can also kill you, but it's also edible and you can make beer out of it. Yeah, oh, cat's tail is what? super useful. It's Anyways. also really fun to throw at somebody, too, because it kind of goes boof when it hits them or hits the ground next to them. <laughs> oh, yeah, <as> they're <laughs> the picking next... fluff out of their fur forever. It's the world's next ah! <laughs> Do not. I'm back. <laughs> you, you, can, the flow. <laughs> you can eat the seeds even after they turn white like that. It is not tasty at all. Just because you can <laughs> eat it and have no ill effects doesn't mean it tastes good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have you seen the t the videos of people trying to, and they just get a mouth of fluff and they can't do anything about it? Yeah, because they're trying to eat it raw, like idiots. There was one I watched. This lady put it in a fucking oven and everything, tried to cook it, and some person tried to boil it, and it still went fluff. Yeah, you no, you, gotta into gravy. you literally have to put it in a gravy and then make it into a soup. Mm. Which, hey, which Maybe. is a good thing, because it grows fucking everywhere, at least out this way. I think as long as there's water, there's cattail. Oh yeah, it's all over well, the place. Factory. It is like the best insulation and plus yeah, let's, fire let's starter. Let's get back to the topic here. So, back to one out there for you to Google. You'll think it's pretty cool. And we're going to get back right after I get done with this one. There is a mushroom out there. It's very close to one that's also extremely toxic, so be careful. Dude. But, I believe it correctly, um, if, you, if you know what you're looking for, it's an orange mushroom that grows in these little shelves. That's the one you want. They call it chicken of the woods because if you break it off and you peel it open, it looks just like chicken meat. And it's super popular amongst vegetarians and vegans because if you season it up with the right dries and wets, which is a term for seasoning when it comes to vegan bullshit, it can actually taste pretty close, but not like exactly pretty close to chicken nuggets. Huh. And it's because it's a fungus, it is obscenely nutritionally dense. Oh, yeah. And you, you it can looks take, like a you rooster's can, cockle. You can take literally every single one of them except one, and in a couple of years, that whole fucking thing will be saturated again. All oh, thanks. Another yeah, way that they're, you they're, can tell it's a chicken of the, the woods. Those bodies, right? Not the actual fungus itself. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the fruit. They actually call it the fruit of the fungus. It releases spores, and that's what does all the preparation. Yes. Right. Like the actual fungus itself is inside the wood that it's growing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not gonna harvest that unless you're wanting to take a chunk of wood home with you. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love it. What do you got there? Oh, uh, wood. wood. Would not recommend because those spores will, in fact, give you pneumonia. Yeah. Uh, that's why you gotta wash it really well. Another way okay. you can tell if it's chicken no. in the woods is it grows in like this ball shape. This in here, it's shelves, not balls. Balls they are the poisonous one. Yes, they are shelves, but the overall shape of all of those shelves put together is a ball shape. I'm gonna get somebody killed. Google it later on. I just did. Also Google it. Yeah. So yeah. You have met Citron. They're not saying much. They're just happy you're there. Figured you might want to join them for whatever they're eating. Um, pretty much seems to be rice and beans. Very new, very, very packed for you. Got any questions? You can ask them, or you can join the argument with um, Raji and Bob currently about him being a BB. <laughs> When's it gonna devolve into just somebody saying "wah" over and over again? Hmm. Beatrice is probably more uh, focused on feeding herself. And hanging out. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to remember. Did you say the Zen and uh, yeah? I guess you you did say Zen and Mob Faraji are going to be joining in. 
Look at the temporary party. Yes, I had I had a brain fart there for a minute. <clears throat> okay, brain farts happen. Oh, you children. Got any questions you want to ask? Oh, yeah, okay. I am kind of drawing a blank. <clears throat> My brain is still catching up to where we are in the plot right now, so I don't <laughs> have any questions. Up. That's okay. I use context clues. Kevin's almost con constantly lost, unless Nero's talking to him. <laughs> That's okay. Nora and Kevin are off somewhere else. They're meeting up with Doru and a couple other people to go to the Blackstone Fortress. Fucking old people on their loud ass TV. <laughs> yeah, so. It's nice to meet all of you, and Aurora, it's good to see you again. There he is. They're hmm, face that they made, and they look up with a fucking fork full of beans and rice mixed together. So it's good to see you, you again. <laughs> And she made the mistake of putting cheese in there, and now it's kind of like acting like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> and who did? Aurora is currently struggling to get this mouthful of peanut butter like substance down that she's created. Beans, rice, plus cheese equals peanut butter like glue. <laughs> There's so much starch and protein. And then she returns to eating. Not even saying a word. Just... <laughs> that was a good talk. <laughs> <laughs> a good talk. Good talk. And you know, Beatrice herself doesn't have much to say. She's kind of in the same boat, stuffing her face with whatever will fit in it. <laughs> so, is there any information about this dungeon that we're about to go to? Does anybody know about it? We know a lot about them. <laughs> well, what are we to expect when we get there? Beatrice is going to swallow her food, and she said, well, uh, lots of crystal critters. You don't want to breathe their little spray of bit. I don't think they'll be doing very much bleeding for me. No, I don't expect I can. I wonder if your poison will work on them. I maybe, and oh. I think the corrosion from my bow might do some good. That poison will not work. Bleeding will not work. Corrosion would work. Electricity might work. Fire may not work. Seems like they'll be fairly strong against me. Might have to work an electrical spell in. Holy shit, somebody just sent me a fucking science thing in the background. Fusion experiment breaks <laughs> record and blasts out 10 quadrillion watts of power. Oh my god. What? I just read that. It was over like a it was over an obscenely small amount of time, but the fact that they did it and actually have a method in which to uh, duplicate it is awesome. That is like face melting. <laughs> Holy fuck. 20%. Or no, it's 10% of the total energy that the planet receives from the sun in 90 seconds. Yeah. 
Take that, son. That's still a fuckload of power. <laughs> so if they could figure out how to draw that out over a day, that, that boom right there, they could power the entire West Coast. They detonated a chunk of, um, a pea-sized chunk of hydrogen. Solid hydrogen, which is odd, but... Solid hydrogen or solid hydrogen? Holy shit, that's a lot of hydrogen. <laughs> well, it's a pea-sized chunk of hydrogen. They said, they just said hydrogen, but it's some idiot, it's some idiot newspaper that sort of, they don't get all the information. Oh, well, Jesus Christ, so that's amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's super fucking awesome. <laughs> And where was Spencer. that? The ignition lab right. in California. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the fucking ignition lab. It was like 12 lasers. <laughs> Are some of any of those crystals worth anything? Or are they just very common there? Sorry. Yeah. Food in the mouth, you got to learn to wait for an answer, kid. <laughs> it's okay, you're very impatient. I'm okay with that, though. I have seven brothers. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Okay, let me describe it as this. There are values for all monster parts. If you want monetary value, which I don't know why you're so fixated on money, it won't get you anywhere as an adventurer. But there's not really a monetary game because you're not going to be able to sell a lot of that to anybody. Now understand though, you can pick those bits and collect a bunch of them. You can take some experience and a little bit of your funds given for missions at a time and give them over to a smith of some manner and have them make you an object. The crystals themselves, only a few of them, if you find a diamond or a uh, azurite or a lazuli sepians or wilesis, would probably be actually worth anything. The rest of them would either be too brittle or too toxic. Some of them are even radioactive. Learn to stop focusing on money. If you want well, the money, go and get on the Mercantile Association. No, I don't mean the monsters. I'm, I mean, like, any of the crystal, actual crystals in the cave. And I told you, if you're worried about money, you need to go join the Mercantile Association. Right. Otherwise, you're guaranteed to die. I had to think about it. I could probably use some of the crystals to make some, some dangerous arrows or something. I don't know. <sighs> it's almost like you don't even listen. I do. I'm just trying to think of what we could make out of crystal. You can fuck off! Get it your damn self! Get it your <laughs> damn self! Or get her to get it. Oh, fucking well! Well, the, 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 the little bit can wait. Uh, the, the ingredients to make that jerky will be there in a few hours. And a discussion. Somebody trying to rope you into going shopping now? No, my old man is trying to get me to get up, stop what I'm doing, and go in there and do shit for him. When he can wait, it'll be there in a couple of hours when I'm done. It's always there. It's not hard. It's that damn important. What you said? You got the leg, you can function. Okay. Sitting here typing shit down. Mm -hmm. Ah, great. I lost where I was on here. Fuck. Man, this is just such a vibe. It really it is. is. Oh. 
Who did this one? This one specifically was done by... Darren Curtis. Love him. <laughs> what? I hear this song in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> At least it doesn't have I'm lyrics. I'm not sorry. <laughs> that has I mean, it's not a bad words. song, it's just good lord. <laughs> Go play the bar, or pay the bar to play something else. <laughs> Heaven's not here. You... you want something else? They can do something else. And would you like them to hear? Here, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, my little vibes it is. You could totally just play like a singular note from Megalovania and everyone will know what you're playing. Megalovania! Yeah, no. Those kind of people, I think their parents should just drown them. Oh. I'm sorry. But if you get mad excited over a game, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to hate it. Piss off here and here. If you get excited over a subparly design and barely functional story like Undertale, <sighs> man, I bet you're... <laughs> man, you must really like the eighth season of Game of Thrones. Oh, man, I might have to turn comments off Never this seen video. It. Ooh. <laughs> 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 I haven't watched any of Game of Thrones. Yeah, not messing much. Just the first first bits of it were pretty damn good, but meh. Yeah, because <laughs> the writer actually had time to think about what they were doing. And then the show caught up, and they're like, oh, fuck. I heard from my roommate that the 18th season is trash. Oh, yeah. No, it's... And, and then they end it You with, see that well, picture that somebody did... There's gonna be whoever has the best story. I'm like, bruh, there's an NPC character in the background that's been in, like, every single fucking shot. What do you mean who has the best story? It's that guy. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm Actually, I'm gonna let that loop. Yeah. That was supposed to be your travel music, but I like it too much. Oh. Are there, is there a plan once we get to there, or are we just gonna go as you go? Plan is. Well, I'm sure there's a plan. We just haven't heard it yet. In fact, I don't. I don't know exactly where it is. <laughs> what, the plant? Did you lose the plant? <laughs> Oh, how quick is this dungeon? Oh, I like that part. Very uh -huh. close. They say fairly close. I did this thing. Sorry, it is a bit busy here typing a bunch of stuff. No right. worry. It's okay. So they'll inform you that there are four main monsters you will probably find. Go to face. Hylases, Stepins, Mineralupi, Krishnagisa. And I assume these are all pretty much mineral-based? 
sort of the dungeon's whole thing. I kind of figured, just like the uh, Miser's Mance was undead themed. Didn't go deep enough to see its actual thematic. Why this is giant crystal hornet monsters? Very unpleasant. Uh, Sepians, they are varying crystal constructs. They're usually the remnants of somebody's decision to create a... Well, the dungeon in this case is decision to create a guard of some kind. An effective guard. Mineral loopy, crystalline wolves. Chris and the geese are the largest threat. Fairly intelligent, capable of targeting you the same most people could, but not quite that capable. They're large, extremely hostile, Naga-like creatures made of whatever gem or crystal. Well, they're not all going to be crystal. It's they're minerals, so they can be rock and shiny crystal. Well, that makes sense. Time to bury this one back in your head. <laughs> I want you to hear it in your dreams more. Oh, I mean, I guess Araxalias. I think I can guess what those are. <laughs> very common. I think Fionn will be very unhappy about those. <laughs> Rexalias are a little deeper. Not to worry. We will keep you safe. Oh, you're going to pull your weight, though. Hey, I was... Twelve of us? I wouldn't expect this to just go through the dungeon being carried 100% by you all. We are going to pull our own weight. We certainly are. We do find the elite sepians will have to deal with them. Or an elite version of any monster. Or heaven forbid an infested crystal lilix. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. That there sounds like nothing good. Ulrich have a tendency to pop up in other dungeons. They're one of the most common subterranean monsters. They're also one of the only ones that seem to be able to hold their own across the board against most other monsters. Of course, where we're going... You do remember, don't you? Remember what? Where we're going. I, uh, I don't remember the name of the dungeon, but I know that it's just, like, a bunch of caves and crystals and stuff. I told you it was just a cave. Hmm? Well, nobody, really. That's kind of what I assumed. It's probably not good to make assumptions. Well, if it's true, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. Hey. Okay. Do you want to weigh in? Okay. I suppose this is where we are now. All right. We're going to go ahead and do Chalong since 
as always. There's not really any great font, and it's okay. Anything you want to do? If not, we'll progress the morning, and you'll be leaving. Well, I think Beatrice would want to practice a little bit more with her sword, just to kind of get back into the swing of things. If I remember correctly, I I was just chilling out by a pond, like, whatever was there. Wasn't she fishing? Yeah, she was fishing, but also, like, when she got bored of that, she just started throwing bits of the carrot cake in. And they were sat there with, like, two or three of them. Yeah, there were a couple of people, but I don't remember yeah, I think, who uh, she was with. Mom was and Veronia. Yeah. yeah. They eventually oh, yeah, left that. and came back. Yeah, I mean, Naiba is just taking this time to fucking relax after everything that just happened, and we're immediately going back into a life-threatening situation. They want to not be, be at high sure. alert all the damn time. Yeah, relaxing is good. Gotta yeah. do some of that. Yeah, you just go yeah, to it's the called the Kevin concert. approach. Fuck off for a few months, like a month or something after doing some a bunch of stuff, and then get back to it. <laughs> just do. You could just go to the, you know, there's a hot spring here that they have inside a little... You can go to that bathhouse, so you can go outside and relax as a group. I... You can go watch some of the um, elites performing one of the entertainment acts in the arena where they're going to be killing monsters that have been captured. Right, as long as someone think... gets nigh by and informs them what the group is, otherwise they're just going to hang out. I think Fionn would elect to relax in the hot spring. That makes sense. I think he would relax in the hot springs and read his book, new book. Yeah, because that's exactly where you want to take the book. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to the hot springs. Water. Where it can get damp. <laughs> if it's an outdoor hot springs, there's enough outside air that it's... On the inside. It's not going to get damp. And don't no, take your inside. book. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, no book in the indoor hot springs. It's got a total of 15 little places to sit and relax in. And little walkways between each of them. So you can traverse or turn around and communicate with one another. Well, I think Fionn... Uh, is anybody else going to join Fionn? Well, Beatrice might have it if you aren't busy training or practicing it. Just basically refreshing her memory on how to use a sword, going through the motions, and that sort of thing, getting a feel for the weight of it and the balance. And you'll follow. You okay. To follow. You always follow. Protect. Who? Sin always follow and protect the bun. Okay. What about Bonnie or Faraji? Bonnie's already going to go off and do some more weightlifting. Rush isn't what he wants to do. I'm also going to avoid Shizuna's advances, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that is slightly surprising, but not super surprising. Maybe, maybe Shizuna wants the uh, collection. Get the brother and the sister. <laughs> they is definitely a pretty cute couple, too, actually. Yeah. Fionn, she's going to go to the hot spring and just kind of pick out a random square to sit in and just kind of relax for a few hours. Like he alone. Fuck you. Nobody's in here. There's always somebody in here. He's not. He, I never said he was alone. Mm. Who knows? Maybe he can make a new friend. I don't think they they're allowed to do that kind of stuff in the hot springs. <laughs> not that kind of friend. You twit. <laughs> oh, I'm the twit. Says the skank. Often I don't know what you're talking 
It's like off in the back corner, there's Vesuvius and Galu sitting in the same one. And it's just like small Vesuvius muscles giving the big muscled shark lady massage. Oh, is that the same shark lady I talked to? Yes. The other Osmium. Oh. Very interesting. Because he's using his bare hands, his entire back is covered in that rock and like that mm, lava like rock structure. As he's shifting all of that heat around. Feel people staring at him. Leon's not staring. He's just minding his own the, business. I think the reason they stare at him is because it's like, hey, it's like different. <laughs> what, you think they get it on? <laughs> it's like everybody's wondering process is like... <sighs> you wonder? Fire... Uh, Volcanoes. He's volcanoes. She's the ocean element here. They make an island. Are they making islands? <laughs> They're <laughs> making islands. They're making little island babies. They're gonna make a hill just like our hill. <laughs> And somewhere, Glycol is just glaring at the sky again, listening to retarded conversations. <laughs> I think he's gotten better control over that. He doesn't just listen in on everyone's conversation anymore. Sometimes oh, no, he he's listening he's directly to work. us. <laughs> yeah, he totally is. Like, when he's bored at work, he'll sometimes be nosy as shit. Wonder what people are thinking. Why one of his, uh, Co-worker, professors, they 100% fill their head with gibberish because of him. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, fucking one of them, the dice decided that they somehow figured out the secret song, so he'll listen just... <laughs> it's a it's a secret. I'm being choked in my brain. <laughs> ah, my soul is being choked, Hal. Michael could literally just give you a fucking headache. <laughs> just, you know, just for like, some some seldom used sub thought process to just recite binary code. <laughs> now what he'll do is like he'll target a nerve and put a bunch of signals in it and like give it like an overload. In a single spot, and it's like, ah. and then he'll slowly make it crawl around your head like a worm. Is like, no. <laughs> See, that's why you, the gibberish has to be sensible enough to keep listening to, but it's still gibberish. Like, for instance, 41 monostatically spaced grouting bushes were arranged to fade into the rotor slipstream, a mixture of high S-value polyethyl hydrobees am amine and 5% rayum motors. By the way, <laughs> I hope you bite your what? tongue. <laughs> Thanks to our what? world, somebody can try and listen to him as just... a conjure. Powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> the fitness <laughs> gram pacer. <laughs> I will lay everybody's heart. About that I hope you sure. shit on your nutsack. <laughs> That's why I'm lying down. <laughs> Safer. The Neo Better Encaginator has chocolate. now reached a high level of development and has successfully used the operations of... <laughs> Moving <laughs> on from... The missile knows where it is by knowing where it isn't. It knows where it isn't by knowing where it is. Therefore, that helps the missile determine where it needs to be. <laughs> I know where it's not. <laughs> Don't this worry, the delicious. missile won't hit us because it knows where it isn't. <laughs> no, I got something that'll make him upset. There's nothing you can do that will make him upset. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Well, not upset, but annoyed. Just like everybody trust else. Me. Trust me. 
it won't work with as much shit as he's heard in Shadow's head over the years, amongst other people's. <laughs> like, probably just... he, like he listened to Ivy's one time and just a glorious purpose. <laughs> 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 I feel like Nyby's head would be just empty, no thoughts. Just head empty, no thoughts, only jizz. <laughs> you gotta maintain <laughs> that neutral, uh, you know, emotional state, and having thoughts causes emotions, so obviously, no thoughts. Well, see, like, you can't have a, like, even if you're trying to think of nothing, he'll do something like implant a song in your head. And, like, as you try to resist it, he'll keep implanting catchier and catchier and catchier and catchier songs. <laughs> so, like, if you're just sitting there, like, resist, and then out of nowhere, just... I come from a land this down is... under! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. How long before we get to it? It's a small world! <laughs> After this all... Song, that's man. not even a bad song. What about the song that never ends? You tell me that's not better. All right. How about how about like yeah, you're just sitting there listening to yourself in silence, trying to resist Glyco reading your mind because you know he's doing it, and then just in the back of your mind, you just hear. Summertime, loving, loving in the summertime. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, you hear summertime. duck tails. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Twinkle, Twinkle, Patrick Star. You know that Ivy would just immediately go to the DuckTales the Moon theme. <laughs> I think his default song gets stuck in people's head is... Oh, okay. Yeah, it has been forever since I've heard the Macarena. I actually unironically like that song. Alright, but yeah. I do too. So, we want to use relaxing. What's Fionn wanting to do? He can try and recruit Faraji or Marvin Faramia. Well, actually, no, Marvin Faraji, Faramia will also actually go to the, the thing. And they will occupy the Faramia. same spot as him. A against his will, Ma Marvin and Faramia are going to just sit there. It's fine. Fionn's not really going to do anything. He's just going to kind of soak, get his fur wet. Relax. They're insufferably cute together. Theon doesn't mind. He thinks it's cute. But he's not going to say anything. He's just going to just in his head just fall. You're concerned because Mob is light over their back. Eh, not really. I mean, after what he caught them doing by accident, he's not very concerned with anything anymore. Thank you. We should remain here ever. I like that. And then we got Fionn in the water. The cat that actually likes water. Let's sing your name. Mow. 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 Fucking like Nora's um, gonna flip Kevin on the ear. Stop meowing. What the fuck are you doing? We're over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reflex. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but being weird. Sorry, Doru. <laughs> He's weird. Probably Bane damage. But yeah, uh, Kevin, Doru, Doru, Kevin. Well, you've already met. Yes, we yeah. <laughs> hey, You're pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> That is true. And thank you. <laughs> Should we go? You know what? Never mind. You're an adult. You can go on whatever the fuck you want. I'm not even going to try and police that. <laughs> I might be near the last adventure I go on before I decide to take some leave and relax for a while. Good idea. <sighs> okay, so got me, got you, got her. 
Who else should we take? I know. Weiss and oh no shit, she's going somewhere. Oh, we don't have a good ranged option. We'll get Carlo. Well, no, we get you. Never mind. About to say, damn. <laughs> well, to be fair, I've seen you stab things with a spear a lot too. Well, sometimes you. Do. No, that's fair. It's it's situational. He's I'm not a tank. You're not a tank. He's definitely not a tank. We need a tank. I'm more of the provide the occasional distraction type. Mostly hit with stick. <laughs> hit good with stick. Stick go punk. Right, wife? Life good. <laughs> <laughs> I a Slytherin comes around the corner at just the perfect moment. Right, what now? I don't know, Kevin, right what? I wasn't even here for part of this conversation. Why are you trying to rope me into this? They're bullying me. <laughs> bullying is good for you. You're not in this conversation. You bought out of it. <laughs> Jones over in another room. Jones' foot starts to cramp. Yoan is currently watching a lizard pet a horse's head. That's the easy way to sum it up. No, Yoan can uh, wait. Okay. Yeah, no, we're not jumping around. It's your face. Stop. Your face. Okay. Kevin, who do we ask? I don't know. Damn it. I don't know what's going on half the time anyways. Of course you don't know. You don't know who to ask in the guild. Ah! Okay, hold on. Tank, good tank, good tank, good tank. Who's a good tank? Who's a good tank? Who's a good tank? Who's a good tank? Who's... We've had damage sorted. Oh, I'm trying to think, though. We need composition. Your range. I'm ranged melee. Doru's melee. Man, maybe, maybe keep them in a, keep them close and locked down. I don't think we need a Grand Lancer, though, because those are... Lancer types are very bulky and very durable, but very... Oh... Maybe you get a war chief, a street builder. That could work. I don't know if any sword gods are available, but if we could find a southern sword god, that would work too. I don't know if our guild has any sword gods. Oh. I'm not familiar with every single person in the dang guild. There's hundreds of us. Okay, I'm gonna go look for a guild mate. Don't worry. You guys I don't know, be adults. Bye, silly. Bye, silly. And Doru, of course, is just going to wave and green. Silverin returns to doing Silverin duties for the day. Beatrice training, then watching the train. Yes, she is trying to be graceful and etc. You know what matters is she's trying. Yeah. Are those giant sneezes I'm hearing in the background? 
<laughs> yes. They're in a completely different room, too. Somebody's soul is attempting to leave their body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was Fionn's question? Now he was gonna ask. Uh, he was gonna ask. Um, <laughs> shut. He was gonna uh, ask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Um, he was gonna ask. Stared at me like two of them from the park. <laughs> No, 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 fart, it's not me. <laughs> no, don't add the fart, please. <laughs> okay. Bye, adding the fart. Anyways. He was... He, he was gonna ask Mob and Farami if either one of them knew how to pierce ears. Do you have a problem with asking professionals for help? It's not bad, I just don't know where the professionals are. Do you feel like you have a very bad tendency to just ask random people that you assume know everything? When in yeah. actuality there are people who do this for a living, and you can go pester them. <laughs> She's the man thing. She doesn't understand why you're not wanting something very specific done by a specialist who does it. Oh, I do understand. Um... I do know how to pierce the ears. Will I pierce yours? No. You're too weak. I'd crush your ear. Oof. <laughs> She's gonna kind of touch one of his ears. Oh, I, did, I, know how to... I did not know how to pierce the ears. I can pierce your flesh. Hey. Oh, I just want, I mean, very good question. A very apt thing to ask is. She'll raise a hoof out of the water. Does these look like the hands of someone who can pierce? Uh, do not thick me. Those like are feet. Hands, feet. Feet. Technically, I will not let you belittle oh. yourself by calling yourself a horse of any kind. You are a centaurus, and you will accept that. Well, most importantly, your Faramia. And also a makeshift match. Not a lot of people would know that I have a horse underneath here. Because I see my coastal and see, look at that beautiful woman. No, but if you'd want your ears pierced, glass Faraji. He pierces himself all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> sure. Like, you don't fucking know where his piercings are. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He's just gonna <laughs> scratch his chin. Dude. There's something One of you the know about Faraji. He tells Sin a lot, because he thinks Sin is his ally. And Sin and me are inseparable. I am aware of that. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, you so he likes to kiss and tell people. What? Don't worry. He'll be fine, I'm sure. Or not. I mean, does it really matter to me? My music's gonna be stuck in my head permanently. I'm gonna burn this place around. <laughs> There's just a pipe leading from wherever the bards are. Yeah. I mean, I can download Don't Act Dumb. That's what you wanna listen to the whole damn session. <laughs> don't act dumb. Don't act dumb. Don't. I'm gonna stab one of all, one or all of you at the same time. I don't know who or how, but I will do this. These one of all of us. Caution when aggravating my temper. Well, after Fiona's done relaxing for a few hours, he is gonna go. 
get dry off, get dressed, and go find Faraji wherever he may be. Just in time, too. What's that? I Did guess. he rescue him from Shizuna? No, it's just he got out of there before he had to see what water splashing and stuff leads to. Mm. If Nora was there, that'd be a water bottle. No! Bad! Mm. <laughs> 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 I fucking love Nora. <laughs> Fucking Noro's that kind of just, no public keep your hormones in your pants. <laughs> pants are individual, not communal. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you wear the get along shirt. That's a shirt. <laughs> there needs to be no. get along pants. Bold assumption to think that the get along shirt is going to keep me from striking you. <laughs> All you've done is trap yourself in here with me, Uber. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah. Headbutt, 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 headbutt. <laughs> Motherfucker! Headbutt. Oh, God, my nose! <laughs> I might have nubs, but I'm a mighty warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you laugh until, like, kobolds, which do technically exist in this world, headbutt you in the balls with that scaly skull of theirs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's happening to Fionn. <clears throat> His voice suddenly just... But, <laughs> 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 uh, what's happening currently, uh, Faraji's just actually got Shizuna to sit down and talk to him. What? Instead of just trying to grope him. Talking. <laughs> I know. I am. But we we both can't be overwhelmed by that. Do not give me that look, Sin Jr. <laughs> ah, God, I know! <laughs> ah! Asshole, your knuckles hurt. Uh, anyways, hey Faraji, hello. What do you a... want? It looks up at you with a bloody nose. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna ask if you could give me a hug. You're coming to ask me for a favor? Really? I've been struck in the face by this she demon, <laughs> and they're gonna ask me for something. You are so selfish. Sit out. I was gonna ask if you. If you needed something to help with your nose first, but no, no bullshit. Don't lie there. to me. I know you sit your ass there. Yeah, that's right. You sit right there. You stay. You're a horrible liar, just like your mother. Which one? I am. The one that says, I was just a dick. No. Yes, you were. We can hear the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Bold, um, very, one. very strong woman. It's Barb. Shut up. I'm talking to this one. Hey. I'm gonna learn to wait your turn, mister, even though I have to spank you. And No, actually, no. Even though I have to threaten you with spanks and then get right there and leave an air cushion to tickle your ass but never touch you. Don't know how I feel about it. Exactly. <laughs> Spanking would be too good. You'd that. enjoy it. <laughs> The bull, just that bull Kevin bull. just kind of herm, just kind of hums not, in Kevin the middle of conversation. Here, you stay away. He kind of just hums in the middle of some conversation. Just somebody is bullying a cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, somebody's bullying the cat, and I'm missing out. <laughs> Someone is bullying a cat. We have to go stop them. Where is the cat? <laughs> what is Shizuna? We have to I assist him. Shizuna tries to tease him. It would be very assertive. Shut your ass up. I'm not done with you. Now, I get it. The both of you want something from me. You want something hopefully corporeal that isn't attached to me. She wants <coughs> exclusively something that is attached and produced entirely organically by me. No. <laughs> to that. Get to know me. He knows me. That's why I did stuff with him. He, like, knows my hey. name. Knows what foods I like. He knows exactly where to scratch behind my head when it itches sometimes that I can't reach because I've got these glorious muscular arms. 
<laughs> most importantly, he doesn't touch my fucking tape without my permission. I know you're like your dad. You think you can just do what you want. Well, unfortunately, your dad's never tried to have sex with me. Actually, I don't know if that's true. He probably tried to, but I'm extremely dense and ignore everything. <laughs> Get you a woman that hides behind a barrel and waves their arms at you. If you can't pick up on that, then you're the lost cause. <laughs> your name. Congratulations, you know my name. So does literally every one of these other skanks around here who stare at me. She's gonna just take the <laughs> minute, stands up, and points a finger. Okay. I'll return. What do you want, Fiona? While well, we have time away from the devil. Well, I was wondering if you could pierce my ears so I could wear the earrings oh, that Jesus. I wore at the fair. You interrupt me in my... And I'll rub his nose as it starts... He started to rub his nose clean now that, you know, he's felt it. It's been slowly eating further. Now that it's, like, dripping down his chin, he's actually getting rid of the blood. You interrupt me in my interview with the devil, the <laughs> demon that she is you want an ear pierced? It's simple. Get a pick, stab it through it, pull it out, stick it in, close it up, let it dry. You know, that sounds a lot simpler, but I know you'd probably stab yourself inside the ear canal and go deaf. And you'd be saying, what? A lot more. That's why I came to you. Oh! Why do I have to be because... so useful? Because you are. You're a great person. You know a lot of things. I know what you're trying to do. I know because I'm an egomaniac and I appeal to myself. And it's going to work because I'm an egomaniac. <laughs> I won't be happy about it and I will continue to bitch about it entirely. I mean... I just Pulls a soul out of his inventory. Now, look at that. He's going to look at the thing he was told to look at. He was legitimately pointing at somebody who's just currently got their head stuck in a bar. Oh. Yeah. And then there's a yoink on the ear and then a prompt stave. Ow. There. Left ears pierced. Just slip the little thing through and lock it tight. All right. And Fionn would get the earrings out of his inventory and put one of them in. Ah, yes. Thinks it's going to be that kind. Notice that it's actually some sort of little gator clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are easier. And he'll take it from you, grasp your ear, line it up, and then clamp it down, and you feel it dig in through your fucking skin as it pierces and threats itself. There you go. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be one of the clip-on ones. I'm going to laugh at him. <laughs> hey, just do that with the other one. You're lucky! These are easy piercing ears. Yes, I guess I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I ate a whole Thank pepper seeds and all. My tongue is numb, Phil. He says as he proceeds to eat another pepper and wanders off. Thank you. Yeah. I wonder who's Ask I can put this pepper seed covered onion. 
Where's my baby? Raji has wandered off in search of somebody. I don't know who. I'll get back to you when I find out when the dice are done rolling over here. I would have thought that he would love to torment. She's in a... He has scared her off for now to go and do something other than just try and hump him. Well, since Faraji has wandered off, he's gonna... He's gonna go to the library and read his book in peace. Or at least he well, hopes. That's the, rest of your, that's the rest of your day, then. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Ah, yes. I don't exactly know what the ever-loving fuck Aurora's doing. But she's also going to sword train. Uh, cool, Beatrice has a buddy. Hey, yeah. Hey. Uh, she's about 10 or 15 feet away, though, because she needs a little room to practice. And you notice her, like, very pretty sword that she'll pull out. And it's one of those interesting ones where it's sort of like, looks like two sharp halves of a blade stuck together, and it's missing some at the halfway point. It's just, like, hollow from there. Like, sort of like a uh, pair of prongs, but then the rest of it down is solid. She sets that one with its pretty-ass, interestingly colored light blue metal and engravings and embossing. Sets that down, and then she proceeds to take out, what looks like, 16 smaller short swords of identical nature and just slowly starts setting them out on the ground, too. And then she'll take her big sword and give it a little magical surge. And the other 16 short swords will just raise themselves up and just kind of rest there behind them. And you can see them very fucking intently focusing on not stabbing themselves with all of these as they float around. <laughs> yes, that would, that would be a, a bit of a feat. then proceed to violently demolish a training dummy. Kind of terrifying to watch. All it takes is one slash from them and it's like some sort of memory effect that makes the other blades follow suit in the same slashing manner. But it's not limited to one slash. It's like she's able to queue up a sort of attack registry where these... <laughs> slashes and cuts of hers that make all of the other smaller blades follow suit in succession when they're able to. Well, that's pretty cool. They themselves have some of those tattoos on their wrist that you can see that are similar to her father is of some design. And when they take a minute to look around, you can see that they have that same glowing pair of brilliant azure-colored eyes when using magic. So it's very obvious they're using some form of, some sort of weird focused form of divination while they're training. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, what? Very interesting. It's complex magic of some kind that ends with them just standing there with all of those blades in a sort of a orbiting circle around them. Yeah. 
they yeah. cannot participate with that. Part. Might attempt to develop a spell. No, I'm not a hundred percent sure how it works in this setting. Well, if you want to create a spell, it's not that's not really that hard. You're just going to have to be a set value depending on what the complexity of the spell is. Hey, what spell are you trying to make? Well, I was thinking she might attempt to enhance her attacks with uh, lightning, basically add a, a lightning element effect to her uh, attack. Her brain could work. So it's just a lightning imbuement wouldn't necessarily be too difficult. Uh, just. I don't think it would do damage because their intelligence is low. <laughs> it do, but it could help. Uh, it, it it would still do. What it can, what it normally can do, is a very low flat damage of our intelligence isn't very high, but it can still put stacks of its affliction on things. Uh, so, is it just imbuing the weapon with it? Or is, what is the particulars of it? Is it, an imbu is it lightning along your weapon? You want to channel it into it? I think pretty much that's what it would be, is... Uh... Basically, uh, of course, lightning along the weapon to add lightning to her attack. All right, what's your intelligence? Uh, let me just find that real quick. Grand total is 40. All right, so you're going to have creating any spell from scratch conceptually is going to require you to beat a 50. And for each complexity to the spell is going to require you to add an additional 25 onto it. Okay, so she wouldn't be able to create it. Well, you'd roll a d100. Oh, so it would, would it be a d100 plus her intelligence then? Yes. Okie dokie then. Like, that's just for... I wish to create a lightning spell that and then go on to my weapon. That's all that spell can do. Cool. That's just going to be 75. But if something like hers, if you were to break it down in complexity, you're looking at magical sword, loading blades that memorize things and seem to track along through some form of possibly divination and magnetism. That's like 360, yeah, 370. That's, yeah, that's a lot more complex and more difficult. Like, I, I tried to make that very simple and easy. I felt 50's flat because there's a lot of crazy shit you want to do with magic. Cool. I can just tax the shit out of you for every complex part of it. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. There are some... Ex like, If you have below 100 intelligence, you can't add more than two complexities to a spell, though. Okie dokie. Well, she's basically wanting to imbue her attacks with lightning. That's all there is to it, so. Uh, so she has a base intelligence of 40, and I rolled a 76. You've successfully done that. Because it's a very babu spell, it, it will do damage and it will scale. Unfortunately, it's going to scale with a D in intelligence. That's a very basic Lightning spell, but you successfully made it. So well, congratulations. Okay, you also, um, your muscles ache now. Like you just kind of strained yourself a little bit because you had to course that much magic through you to actually channel and create that spell. Okay. Uh, let me just... like a nine volt battery get pushed to all of your fucking nodes. Do not lick the 9-volt battery. Do lick the 9-volt battery. 
Conversely, lick the six volt lantern better. You can buy in those old hardware stores. <laughs> oh. I want to watch. Ow, my shoulder. Ow, my nipple. Ow, my shoulder. The, Ow, my boob. I mean, my nipple. The fucking one amp six volt. <laughs> yeah, that one's a, like comparable power density to some smaller lithium batteries. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you said it would be a D rank intelligence scaling, and that would be like basically like the weapon scaling chart. Yes, it would scale with a D. Okay. And that scales off because it's offensive, it'll scale like a weapon does, but with intelligence. Okie dokie. So, yeah, like I said, it wouldn't do much. At this point, it would do 13 damage. But, you know, it's better than nothing, right? 13. Not otherwise. Exactly. Plus, it could do, it could do the status effect. I really like how a status actually fuck you up. It was like, yeah, nobody really yeah. expects statuses to play a major role, but not being on fire kind of hurts. Falling from a tank kind of hurts too. <laughs> Clumsy. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that last stare, man. I mean, her gravity really hurts. It do. It do go down. <laughs> uh, no, you don't go down. The planet it came up and... Ugh. I'm getting too tired for that joke. You didn't fall down. The planet rose up to smack you got hit by a planet and survived. So what was the um, status effect for lightning again? Was it shocking? <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> oh, I just realigned my spinal column. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Did you align it left or right of the document? I don't know! <laughs> Center aligned. Uh, corkscrew! Yay, spines! Ah! <laughs> yes. They like to be a very beautiful S-curve, and any other shape is extreme pain. Alright, uh, yeah, it is shocked, which deals mana as damage. And then it turns into twitchy. Oh, that's right. Yours, you have your own ones that I don't have access to here. Uh, it's on my character sheet. Would you like to be stupefied? Or reduce your intelligence per stack. It's actually pretty significant. It can stack like the um, like dazed. Stupefy, frailing, disbelief, tactless, crippling, amenable, lethargic, and timidity. They can all stack a hundred times and they reduce fifteen of that stat. So they can literally reduce fifteen hundred of that stat. Wait, oh, so any I, any status effect can be up to a hundred no. times? No, 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 no. Anything any of the status debuffs that reduce your stat effectiveness can stack up to a hundred times. That's a very. There are only very, very specific things that can do that, though. Okay, because I, I, when you were explaining that, I happened to glance at immobilized, and my first thought was, "Wait, negative speed." <laughs> However, there's also so that's what's like in augments, how which are beneficial to you. They can stack up to hundred times too. So somebody can literally give you temporarily fifteen hundred additional intelligence or strength or charisma. <laughs> they could wrinkle your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could. <laughs> yeah, they could. 
<laughs> so Beatrice is going to be like, I think that's enough practice for now. <laughs> Gets it first Ooh, try. When you're very tired. <laughs> it's very neat though. They'll take their little, essentially, what is a what is their little bag that they brought all their swords in from their inventory, and they'll slowly guide all of the little floating blades back into a tessellating stack, roll it up, and then make it poof as they slide their sword into their back scabbard. Shabbard. shabbard if you will. Ew. It's a shabbard. shabbard. I might have to go here in a minute because I think my parents are home with food. Do you want to go now and go get food? Uh, yeah. Because they are home. <laughs> oh, go get food. That's fine. I guess we can wrap it up a little early. I will return afterward, but I'm not sure how long it'll take me to eat. I'm oh, usually pretty quick about it. We could just wrap you up eat, now. Little... You want to wrap up now? Yes, no, maybe so. Realistically, our characters are just like relaxing until it's time to go. So tomorrow we will be leaving. So tomorrow will be tomorrow in the game too. Yeah. Okay, okay. Tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, tomorrow Sunday in the game. And, you know. All right. So I'll catch you guys later. Who is here? Bye bye. Have fun, friend. And this song is such a bop. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> This is another awesome one. Uh, so, that was okay. Always, Fionn's a little self-centered. <laughs> kind of a I don't wonder how much of that is just misunderstanding of the conversation on both sides. Because it doesn't seem like he's going out of his way to be a cunt. It just seems like it's a misunderstanding of what's being a said or asked. It's teasing him. Oh, that's all of your part. But you're going to... Yeah. Hey, Spice Pup, got a question. I got a fucking answer, bitch. What was in the box? <laughs> Not allowed to close that in for me. Yeah. No. Yeah. In the mystery Sorry. box that you in No. Yeah. The thing is, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> I forgot. I misplaced what it was. I'll find it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No soup for you. Fuck you, I'm gonna go and drop all and play something. all I fucking want, and you can't fucking stop me! Can, will, and already have. You just don't realize it yet. You know Before what? Before I get on Godfall, I'm gonna get money something. where your fucking mouth is, bitch. I don't know. Sounds kinda gay. You know what sounds kinda gay? Me cutting off your nipples and using them to put on the top of a pizza in a salad. Pizza salad? salad? Listen here, pal. Nipple salads! I know that Dirt, for some reason, likes toe salad. No, it's just if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna cause someone undue uh, inconvenience and some, and the surprising amount of pain, I'm gonna take their toes off. Just take the big toe specifically. That's what the, that's the uh, Israelites used to do when they conquered a king. If they didn't kill him outright, they just cut his big toes and thumbs off. Okay, I'm gonna hop out of here. I will see you guys on the game. Is good, good, good house. Ah, my arm itches. Well, scratch it, nerd. I am. Uh, okay. Go.